Good morning. It's Denise from Women Beyond a Certain Age. I do not have a guest today. In fact, well, I'm my own guest. This is what Cindy and I are doing. I'm going to read you a story that I wrote from when I was in culinary school and met the legendary Marcella Hazan. And I hope you enjoy it. And if you don't, don't listen. <laughs> you know, we don't take complaints here. Let me tell you something. We don't get paid enough to take complaints. That's all I can tell you. At the end, after I have finished reading the story, I'm going to give you a loose recipe because it's exactly how I make it, but it was inspired by a recipe that Marcella Hazan made that day at the CCA and that I've recreated many times. And uh, it is in one of her cookbooks. I just will give you looser ingredients because that's how I cook. Okay. The title of this story is Marcella Hazan. In 1983, I was a student at the California Culinary Academy in my hometown of San Francisco. Against the advice of my mother and just about everyone else, I enrolled and started my chef studies. I was 33, the age Jesus died on the cross. Looking back, I realize I have often missed the big signs from the universe. At the time, my mother could only say, isn't this why we sent you to college the first time so you wouldn't win end up working in the kitchen? She had a point. The woman always had a point, but I was determined. During the first three months of intensive schooling, I would walk during my lunch break down to the marina to ponder if this had been a smart move. There were only five women in my class of 90 students. We were treated poorly, discouraged, and often, yet asked to serve the chefs differently. We were degraded. Male classmates were there to learn to cook and run kitchens. Girls were at the CCA because the Constitution of the United States made them accept us. It was a hard time. I was not used to taking orders or being a second-class citizen. I had had a successful career and put my first husband through college and dental school. I knew how to take care of business. Taking care of myself did not come as easily. The notice went up on the bulletin board that Marcella Hassan was coming to teach an Italian cooking class. It was not part of the curriculum, but if you wanted to attend, you might have to assist or be an escort to Miss Hassan. I was the first person to volunteer. I could not believe my good fortune. My interest in cooking began in 1973 with Julia Child's Mastering the Art of French Cooking and Marcella's landmark, the classic Italian cookbook. One cookbook was completely foreign and the other was like coming home. My Italian grandmother and aunts cooked like Marcella, wonderful meals to eat, share and enjoy with your family at home. When the grand dame of Italian food arrived, I was surprised because she was tiny with light blonde hair, not yet gray. But what I really noticed were her huge, soulful eyes. She brought her own apron, plain white, a real cook's apron, nothing fancy. With two other female students, we prepped lemons and herbs and chickens for her to roast. If there was time, Marcella would also make a pasta dish. When I turned around to ask her if she needed anything else, she had a cigarette dangling from her lips. My classmates and I had done almost everything wrong for her setup, and Marcella quickly handed us back our prep bowls and verbally instructed us, oh no, this is too big, this is too small, this is too wet. All her instructions were given with a warm desire for perfection and a straightforward smile. She knew exactly what she wanted. An hour had passed and other students were wandering in for the class before I noticed that Marcella had one dominant arm. Her right arm, much weaker, was a condition often referred to as a withered arm. I would learn later her withered arm caused by a childhood accident. 
I was stunned because I'd been questioning if I had what it takes to make it in the kitchen, any kitchen. Here was my idol cooking away with only one really good arm. It was a sign from the universe I didn't miss. If this tiny, smart biologist turned chef could make it in the kitchen, I had to try. Marcella smoked after her cooking class was over, even though several po people told her no smoking was allowed in the demo kitchen or in the entire school. She simply replied, I smoke. Years later, I told the story to her son, Giuliano, and he sweetly mumbled, yes, that sounds like my mother. I found a classmate to drive Marcella to her next school. He was whining that he didn't let people smoke in his car. I kept saying, this is Marcella Hazan. For God's sakes, open a damn window. When he returned, I asked, well, how did it go? And his sheepish reply was, guess what? She smoked. The end. <laughs> All right. Now, let me tell you, we did have time that day. Um, and Marcella, after she roasted these delicious herb chickens and, oh God, I learned, I probably learned more from her in those, the 20 or 30 minutes when she talked about food than I had. And I don't know how long the three months I'd been at the culinary Academy. So here is the recipe that I want to give you. It's called in Italian, it's pesto al caprino, C-A-P-R-I-N-O. Now, caprino is the word for goat in Italian, okay? So what it was, was she was talking about pestos, and she made this delicious pesto, and we ate it over thin. You should use, oh, nothing is, uh, nothing bigger than a, a spaghetti, okay? It needs to be a thin, long noodle. So you use what you like, but it's basically, you're going to take, like two cups of fresh basil. Lots of times I mix in spinach. If I can't get enough good basil, I'll put in some spinach leaves, remove the stems. Two teaspoons of chopped garlic. I like fresh garlic, but I know people use the stuff in the jar. Totally up to you. Three or four tablespoons of pine nuts. Don't figure out how much it costs. And a half a cup of extra virgin olive oil. Now. You can put that all in the Cuisinart. You know that. If pesto is, you know, is, is that's what pesto is. Um, it's ground up. It's ground up, whatever people want to call it. You see people call things like smoked tomato pesto. There's all kinds of things. The verb comes from the motion of, I want to say crushing is, uh, is pesto. Okay. Now put all those things in a Cuisinart, go around and when it's, you can use half, first time, I should have said this better. Can you tell I don't have a script? Put all the ingredients in your Cuisinart, use half of the oil, let it whirl around, and then add the second part, the second half of your olive oil and taste it. And it's probably, it could need salt and pepper. Now, so we've put no cheese in this pesto. And the reason is, is that the cheese, we're going to take about, Four or five tablespoons of a soft goat cheese. And what I want you to do is you've got your pesto and you've cooked your pasta, cooked your pasta al dente, a little, you know, still firm, but it can be warm. And take your pasta bowl and take your goat cheese and a fork and smash that goat cheese into your bowl, okay? Then you add the pesto from your Cuisinart, then, and mix that together, mix those two together. I use a fork. I'm sure there's some incredibly expensive tool that we should be promoting right now, but I just use a plain old fork. And then you need to salt and pepper it. Taste again and salt and pepper. And then I would add your cooked pasta. You can always, people, if your pasta for any reason has clumped up a little bit. If you haven't thrown your pasta water again away, and most people know when they're making pasta and sauces, you just need to keep about, keep about a cup, uh, half a cup of your pasta water. And then 
put that pasta in with your pesto and your goat cheese and mix it. If it's a little thick, add a little pasta water and done. Okay. Now, if you want to gild the lily, if you're rich, you can add a little, little tiny bit of Parmesan cheese. But actually, the idea of the dish is the goat cheese. Okay, so it's pesto with goat cheese. Um, it works on, I, I like it best um, on a thin pasta, as I said, but you can put it on anything. It's also delicious on a cooked chicken breast. It's delicious on toast points. I mean, it's a pretty standard recipe that you can enjoy. Okay, and the day that a squeeze of lemon, if you want to, also adds a little surprise to it. So that's it. If you need that written out, that recipe written out, good luck. Because Cindy and I will never get to that stage. But I will tell you, many of the recipes that I have adapted in my life come from Marcella's Italian Kitchen. Her new book of classic Italian cooking, okay? She's got several. You can find them used lots of times on Amazon. So that's it. Tell us if you like the story. Tell us when you listen. Please. And we do thank you for the comments that we get. Um, and I want to thank Miss Cindy for always being there. And that's the story. Morning Glory, that's the word, Hummingbird. Thanks, everybody. Write when you want. It's womanbeyond at iCloud.com. And I think that's it. Am I done, Miss Cindy? Miss Cindy is saying yes. Yes, you are. You are done. Are we, Miss Cindy, speak today? Yay for us. All right, I am done, and thank you very much, and thank you to all the people that listen and do send us messages. We appreciate it. Okay, women beyond a certain age. Bye-bye.